Cuba more than any other place, I think any preconceived notions you had about it disappear pretty much by the time you land on the ground. My Cuba experience has been very unique. I've definitely gotten to push myself outside of my comfort zone a few times. I mean, Cuba is a place that I've really wanted to visit. It's a place that not a lot of people get to go. But being on the ground here means that we get to see things, talk to people in a way that you would never have in a classroom. I think my favorite part of the trip had to have been the caves. In the morning, we drove over to Vinales and we climbed up uh, basically a cliff face, which was unexpected and then entered a gallery of caves and basically had free reign in the caves. I couldn't have expected that. I've never really been spelunking before um, and it was a really great experience. So today we've had a really neat experience here in Cuba. Right now we're at uh, an agroecology, uh, sustainable organic agroecology center. Uh, all of the crops are done truly organic with no pesticides, no fertilizers, in, in a way that's in harmony with the landscape. Everything that we had for lunch there was grown there. We experienced a genuine hospitality. So the idea of creating this farm started two years ago. I think Cuba is a really interesting example of both obviously natural beauty and sort of untouched wilderness, but also the rarity of being kind of mysterious and off the beaten path still. Sometimes it feels really familiar, but at the same time, there are also huge differences, I think, due to the political systems and the way society is structured. It's just full of, full of contradictions, which I find really fascinating. More than any other country, they seem to come the closest to living their ideals. It's a really fascinating time to see Cuba. It's a country in transition almost 20 years into the departure of the Soviet Union. We've got some major political reforms going on. So the opportunity to actually come down here and meet with Cubans and get their version, their history, that's an opportunity I could not pass up. Y otra buena parte es que la cueva tiene evidencia de organismos fósiles. The cave also has evidence of a fossil that gave rise to the rocks that you are watching now. Um, and then the guides that we had at the different um, reserves and national parks have been wonderful. They've been really knowledgeable. I was hanging back with Sarah, who was in the trip too, and there was one guy who didn't speak English at all, but he got really excited about all of these different plants, and he was writing down all the Latin names in her notebook. About half of all the plants there are endemic, and a third of all the animals. That means that they're found nowhere else on the planet. Sometimes people want to know why something looks the way it looks with just kind of one answer, but there's often not just one answer. The topography that we're looking at has taken a good 200 million years to develop to what we see today. Diving down here is unreal. We just went to an area so close to shore, which is crazy. In the US, you usually have to work a little harder. And just, you know, 15 feet below the water, it's this amazing pristine coral reef. Yeah, we all piled onto this one boat. There were people up on the top level because there wasn't room for everyone. And yeah, everyone just kind of dove in once we got there. And it was kind of chaos. I lost my partner that I was supposed to be keeping an eye on for a little bit. One of the things that I really like to do when I go on these marine trips is I love to get into the water first and then go in with a student who's never seen a reef before. And then they put their head down into the water and there's this whole world and it's just beautiful. And they called it the aquarium and I've never in my life seen so many different fish in one place. And that was a, a level of beauty that I've never seen anywhere else. What we do is not only teach and educate, but we also have a responsibility to take the information that we've learned and turn it into some kind of action. In terms of Cuba, that action can take many different forms. 
For some people, it's going to be they've been perhaps bothered by the effects of the embargo, perhaps a conservation issue, perhaps they saw a species that they feel is in peril and worthy of preservation. And it would be important for them to be some kind of activist in that arena. Our courses, we learn the material and we are bound to put that information into a bigger context and make it useful for this planet. If I were to sort of summarize how I'm thinking about this right now, uh, the, the word is exposure. I got exposed to a country and culture in transition that I wouldn't have been able to otherwise. I got exposure to really great colleagues and classmates and professors. And I got to engage with a lot of really great, passionate, educated, uh, really committed Cuban professionals. It's just been a fantastic trip for me. It's been honestly the best experience of my life. It's been amazing so far. We've just had so much hands-on experience um, and it's just been an absolute dream. I mean, that's the reason, you know, to have experiential learning, right? It's to broaden your frame of reference and without exception, everyone there, I think, felt that they've never been to a place like Cuba.